right, everybody. Well, welcome back to another OpenShift Commons Operator Hour. Um, I like to do on Wednesdays, we have someone, um, one of the many folks who have built operators that run on OpenShift come in, talk about what they're doing, why they built it, and what their operators do. And today we're really pleased to have Instani here um, and um, Matthias Lupkin. Um, and he's going to talk about using Instana's um, offerings um, to successfully manage applications running in Kubernetes. Um, so, as he's wants to say in his title, context is king. I'm going to let him explain that and introduce himself, and then we'll have live Q&A at the end. So, um, thank you all for joining us today, and um, take it away, Matthias. Yeah, thank you very much, Diane. Um, yeah, my name is Matthias Lipkin, um, and today I'd like to talk a little bit of how, you know, our experience of running our operator, uh, of running Kubernetes workloads, and what we see uh, from our customers uh, of the you know, challenges they have running these. Um, uh, just a few words uh, about myself. I'm the uh, PM for Kubernetes and Infrastructure at Instana. Got some, got some uh, experience in software development uh, all over the place. I've actually been with Red Hat, done, done some interesting um, stuff over there. Um, and now uh, with Instana, we are, you know, focusing on helping developers um, and DevOps teams to kind of manage all this, you know, crazy, crazy things that we're seeing. Uh, and operators help a lot. Um, you know, I, I hope our this talk helps a little bit. And um, yeah, some of all the experiences that we had. All right. So basically, one talk in the slide, right? This is the agenda. This is the talk. Um, so uh, what I would like to talk about today is basically give a you know an understanding of how uh, of what to look for if you're running an application in Kubernetes. And you know we we kind of like separated the different aspects, the different perspectives, and you know came up with these three perspectives, basic perspective, different different views on this. Um, and uh, that's what I would like to share today, um, and also give you very, very ta tangible um, ways of doing this. Um, the, the, the slides, the contents have a lot of, um, you know, further links to to deep dive on on how how to get it going for yourself. So I hope there's a lot of things to take away. So this was actually actually uh, um, uh, something that that um, you know brought up in May, but I I love that I love the, uh, the the phrasing of it as Kubernetes is very good at solving the problem. It induces in your environment, right? So, um, you know, Kubernetes and OpenShift are awesome platforms. Are awesome platform for distributed for for managing distributed distributed setups. But at the same time, it it also introduces a lot of the complexity that we might or might have not been uh, exposed to uh, initially. And I think this is a this is a real challenge, right? It's it's a it's yes, we're techies and we we want to get this uh, all solved, uh, but it's not it's not always simple, right? Um, there's there's challenges for developers, there's challenges for DevOps, and I think there's a lot of a lot of things that we that we can do better. Um, and you know, hopefully, uh, we we're doing part of it uh, today. So, if we take a step back, or if we look at what a Kubernetes application actually introduces. Um, it's actually you, you qu quite a, quite a few new attributes that that make these these things really challenging. The first of all, it's um, you know we um, you know we've talked about microservices based applications before, but to be honest, that that hasn't been um, the scale um, as I've, I've seen uh, before with Kubernetes. Um, and with Kubernetes, there's you know a decent application suddenly consists of hundreds, of thousands of microservices. Very, very different. And you can talk about pros and cons of microservices, but the matter of the fact is Kubernetes allows us and gives a lot of means to doing so. So you know uh, people are taking advantage of it, but they also need to manage these. Right? The change also increases dramatically uh, what what with, with developers. OpenShift provides a great platform for continuous deployment. Um, and you know the increased change of these is just just tremendous. And pods come and go, right? So you've got these auto scalers, you've got rolling deployments, and everything is getting ephemeral, right? Uh, so you know also something that you know at least, at least for me, but also what I'm seeing from customers is something that they've not, not been you know really used to it. 
And, you know, containers are awesome, right? We've got now the whole fleet of suddenly, uh, you know, just packing everything in a container, putting the runtime on it, and then just pick the technology you want. Everything is polyglot now. But who manages this, right? Who's who's taking care of this? So when you are then looking up of, of what, what does that mean? What are the problems? What are the challenges that that you face? That these are these are some of them the, uh, that that I I hear hear most. Is if if they are using Instana or any other other tool of looking up of what 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 the Kubernetes applications are doing is like okay. So first of all, what is actually affected? Like like I'm I'm building my application. It has a problem. What are actually affected? And what what metrics do I need to look at? Like, well, what is the CPU utilization? What are the request rates? And where do I start looking at? What would be actually all, all these metrics actually mean, right? What, that, okay, now I've got I've got a list, but how do these work together, right? Now I've I've got a couple. What else do I need to look at? And what what is the root cause to all this problem? Um, and again, right, this is about, you know, developers, DevOps that are, are now, you know, working with this new environment for them new, right? Uh, you know, maybe for some of the industries, like, you know, been working with, with this for quite a while, but this is like, you know, be, being new, right? It's, it's new, new for them. And operators put another level on it, right? They do codify a lot of these things. But they put another level on this and stitching these things together might have their own means of the sharing that um, distributed load and putting their own custom resource definitions. And again, like which metrics do I look at? What do these mean, right? So another layer of challenges in, in, in managing the Kubernetes application. All right, let's look at it. Let's, let's look at it an example um, that, that you know, uh, just you know, to make it a little bit more more tangible to 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 to, to uh, discuss what we are talking about. So this is a very simple. I don't know if it's a very simple example, but a probably not not too unrealistic example. Let's let's say we're building an elastic search application, right? And and throwing throwing out using elastic search, you know, the common common uh, tool for that. Um, so running this in Kubernetes, you know. Obviously means that we have a deployment in the namespace, you know. Um, then the, the Elasticsearch itself is written in JVM, so that JVM is running in a container on a pod. Uh, most likely we're running this on a Linux host, right? Which is itself a Kubernetes node with its own properties. And all this thing is running in a Kubernetes cluster and some availability, right? So the question is like, what, what do I need to know? What, what, what happens? And I guess, you know, if you're looking at a problem, right, then these all surface, right? So this is the, the simple example or the simple stack. The more, you know, more realistic example is that, that we're actually talking about a cluster, right? So the elastic search is not a single node, but rather a cluster. And each of these, you know, um, each of these clusters is obviously mentioned in, in, in a couple of nodes. And we might have a Spring Boot application or another Java application, you know, most likely with a similar stack. So let's look at a let's look at a problem that 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 could 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 happen, right? So let's start with a lower end uh, right hand corner, the first one. Let's say that that the node has a, an I O problem, right? And that that particular shard in the Elasticsearch cluster, you know, is is getting something to to look out for. Then you know maybe the the thread pool itself on the JVM on the Elasticsearch node is ha has a problem and is a warning sign, right? So I'm I'm circling these the the, the yellow circles are kind of warnings uh, to your system. And 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 then another Elasticsearch node needs to take over, and there the thread pool is so overloaded that it actually you know um, goes uh, beyond a certain threshold. And that requests are queued that much that it you know can't full, fulfill the there's a service that it was supposed to. So actually the the overall cluster gets uh, the throughput is decreasing and the performance of my service application is also decreasing. So I think the 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 the, the, the message I want to bring across is is you know this is I wouldn't say too complicated too far off application a rather simple application. But you can also see that that you know specific problems could be somewhere anywhere in in this in this um, in this setup, and um, 
I would like to, you know, give, give a little bit order into this and give a little bit guidance on, on where to start and how to look for it. Right. This is a little little, little example from our, from our tool. Um, so uh, Instana is a in, uh, monitoring observability tool. Um, we do all sorts of sources um, uh, of what we gather, and we've got this uh, this dynamic graph that hooks up everything. And this is actually uh, uh, you know just a visualization. This is a fun project of seeing the Death Star of all these you know components hooked up. Um, quite fun actually. Uh, the live version is even even funner because it's uh, uh, it's it's dynamic and you can, you can see things moving. All right, so how do we get started? You know, let's 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 look at at, at you know a suggestion of of how to reason the model. So I guess anyone looking at um, uh, any you know ways of of managing monitoring any modern application. Everyone kind of uh, agrees that the first one to reason about are services. Services uh, to you know what the the user or the internal user or a, a dependency within within the the microservice landscape uh, you know needs to provide um, you know is a logical abstraction that uh, that we're looking at and we're going to talk about it. But we're going to but we can't stop there um, as I tried to go earlier. So I think the second one, um, and that's that, you know, obvious, obvious for this one, uh, for, for, for this audience, hopefully, um, is the Kubernetes environment, right? The Kubernetes environment, the OpenShift environment to understand of what's happening there, to get an overview of the namespaces, the parts, the deployments, other workloads, et cetera. Now, the third one, and I'm, I'm, let's, let's see what's, what, what we can get out of the, uh, the, the conversation here, um, is, um, what I would uh, like to argue for is that the infrastructure infra level is not going away. Uh, we try to build up abstractions, but whatever I'm seeing, like you know, looking into some some examples, um, there is always something where you start looking up how a particular container is behaving on a particular host. So. Um, infrastructure, as I showed earlier with the I.O. example, is still something that we need to look into. But as the talk, right, context. The context is king. You need to understand on how things, all these things relate to each other. So that's the fourth uh, dimension or perspective I'm going to talk about. So in a, in a, uh, in a, uh, in one slide again, right, I think um, if you reason about of, of how do we manage Kubernetes applications, then I, I would, you know, try to start looking at these three core perspectives. The logical as service application, the Kubernetes layer in itself, and the infrastructure layer, and how all these things tie together. There's, it's, it's, it's interesting when, when I started talking about these, um, that you could abstract these to the specific roles, right? Um, and I think certain, um, roles are naturally bound to one or the other. So you can think about the services on being for the developer, the Kubernetes side of things on the DevOps side and the infrastructure on the ops side. So I just put them here. But I also think that it's, um, you know, um, the, the, the nice thing about DevOps is that we're not building up walls, right? So we don't want to uh, cut off and then say, I don't, I don't care about the rest. Just give me a host and I'm done with it. Um, you know, we want to combine these. So I think it's also important to share this perspective, share these views, share these metrics, share dashboards between the different organizations. And yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to to what you guys think, but that's 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 my that's our perspective. Now, just just a word. This is one view of this, right? And we you know kind of um, you know brought that um, to Instana, but there's obviously lots of all other perspectives, um, like you know end user monitoring, business custom metrics, synthetic monitoring, networking, security, yada yada yada. I've um, actually had the argument uh, uh, when I was preparing the talk with a, with a colleague of mine that something else is such a more and more important than the three perspectives I I'm talking about here. So you know, it's just it's one view, right? And if you think um, others are more important, happy again uh, to to reason and talk about it. Um, but I think these these are generally applicable. 
All right. So we've got these three perspectives. So what do I, what should I look at? How should I look at these? And then last but not least, let's put them in context. All right. Let's start with the service again. How, uh, what am I looking for? So uh, the definition for a service is for me is something that uh, is, is, is has some logical context to it, right? So it's, it's implementation and infrastructure independent. Um, and we care about what the service provides to that user, right? We've, we've also got, you know, these um, SLI, SLOs, which, which will work perfectly with it. Um, the important piece is that it's a logical uh, unit that serves a, um, a user, a, uh, a service. Now, um, the important piece is that we're looking at it as an implementation independent um, uh, definition here because technology specific KPS can be misleading, right? Um, and, you know, maybe you want to exchange the service with a different technology. So, you know, there are so many things uh, that you can consider about the technology. So let's look at the logical in itself, um, especially in Kubernetes, as I, 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 you know, briefly mentioned with a polyglot environment, there's so many things. So, you know, let's, let's take the logical view on this uh, extractor. We don't have to overdo it, but that's, that's, that's like the. So, um, if you, if we're then looking off of what, what to observe, uh, what, what are we looking into? Um, the first, the first question that you need to, to answer for yourself, uh, for your team is, um, of, of the granularity of a service. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're supporting very heterogeneous environments. And I guess in, in Kubernetes, uh, there's, there's, there's already a structure, uh, to, to what a service is. Uh, but it doesn't have to be, right? You're, you're, you're not bound, um, and I think you shouldn't bound yourself to a Kubernetes service in itself, but, you know, think again, service as a logical unit for yourself. And, um, if you, uh, you know, have, have a, an old web app, uh, uh, a web server, um, then you might, you know, split different endpoints. Um, you know, you might have different granularities, uh, of, of what, what works for you. Um, and in Sana, we have the, the, the default is something that is named and a certain type like HTTP uh, database and the like. Uh, but again, that's, that's up to you on the granularity of the service. The other part is that, you know, need to consider is some sort of higher level assemblies. Um, uh, you know, uh, given the operator, right? Operator is a, a good means of stitching these things together. There's also the application CRD or, or Helm, but you know, it doesn't have to be on the Kubernetes side of things. You can also th think about it differently of, you know, many, maybe some other backend unit is also belonging to that, you know, logical assembly. And I'm, I'm, I'm making this term very, very loosely. We're, we're calling these application perspectives. Um, but you know, whatever, whatever works for you to combine a couple of logical services together, to then, you know, serve of what, what's needed. There's pretty, there's a pretty good understanding, uh, uh, right now of what to observe. Um, the four golden sickness by the, uh, um, uh, Google SRE book have introduced these latency, uh, traffic, uh, traffic error situation. Um, Tom Wilkie, um, from WeForks Kapana has, um, introduced the red method. Which um, resonates a little bit me, uh, more with me because it takes out the saturation, which is a technology specific, uh, often a very technology specific um, component. That said, you know, both work. Um, I'm going to go with the rate errors duration throughout, throughout the. So these are, these are just some examples. So on the left hand side, you see the, it's, it's Dana dashboard, right? Where we, uh, you know, show the information of, of that service. But obviously, this is not bound to, to any tool whatsoever. And so here on the right-hand side, I've just, you know, um, uh, introduced a, a Grafana dashboard that shows similar, similar stats, right? And in OpenShift, you get um, a similar views um, of, you know, showing um, the, the, the traffic, uh, showing the uh, errors, um, um, and, uh, yeah, red uh, request errors and duration. The, the question is, if we're looking at this, is like how, okay, now that's great. Like, you know, let's, let's look at this example and let's look at the data, but how do I get to this data? And there's 
many, many different ways of doing these. Um, the, I guess the most common one, um, and at least out there in the space, that we're, that we're capturing these natively um, or, or with some library out of the uh, workload itself. And um, in the OpenShift cloud data space, Prometheus is the standard. And if we're looking at Java again, there's a tons of tons of options of just using using a specific library called Client Java, uh, Client Java, JMX exporter or Micro Micrometer exporter. So that's uh, um, the most common one uh, we're seeing, um, and you know um, also probably uh, very straightforward. Um, a different a different way of doing this is actually capturing this from uh, distributed traces. So with distributed traces, something that is done as build upon is that you um, you know uh, uh, look at the traces between the different between the different services and um, kind of use these traces to calculate the um, the different different KPIs. The advantage with that is that it, a it's 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 like you don't have to do anything um, if you if you're looking for example if you're using a service mesh or if you're using a Stata you don't have to do anything you can capture them automatically and the other one um, uh, advantage is at least within Stata that you can dynamically change this and in Stata and other tools you can dynamically change the service commit composition the granularity something that I talked earlier about so that's um, uh, you know, a, a, an advantage of, 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 of working with it. Uh, just one note: if you are uh, sam if you're sampling the traces, you know, please please be wary about this and and store store the metrics separately. Actually, there's a, there's a good link that I found from a, from a Red Hat colleague uh, that uh, just did this uh, with Open Tracing and and Jaeger to like to collect and store the application metrics in in Kubernetes. But there's another example with OpenZipkin. All right, so we've got the logical service, and whatever we do, right, whatever we look at, that's always the starting point. That's where we are base, basing um, our uh, SLIs on, our service level indicators, our SLOs, the objectives that we strive for, um, and it's just the uh, kind of the, the starting starting point to, to it all. If you if you do one thing, then do this, right? But um, um, I think for understanding the whole perspective, to under for understanding everything, I think the other perspectives are equally important. Which brings us to Kubernetes. So Kubernetes, as the uh, you know, don't, probably don't know, don't need to talk about that too much in this for this audience. But um, the uh, orchestrator of distributed workloads has a lot of new things to take care of that might have been hidden earlier, right? Uh, Kubernetes opens up this uh, environment for us and um, schedules uh, the workloads across um, across the fleet and makes the resources available to the Kubernetes, uh, to the to the resource available to the actual workload, right? Um, something that I um, haven't included in the example earlier: uh, persistent volumes, persistent uh, persistent volumes to the uh, Elasticsearch environment. So. Um, uh, to the Elasticsearch application, so uh, actually, you know, the database uh, can be stored. So, you know, that's that's the the, the job of of Kubernetes, and has these um, you know great API as everyone is talking about, and makes sure that you know the 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 um, uh, different setups are um, or different workloads, new workloads with uh, with operators, existing workloads with existing uh, schemes. Are distributed throughout the system, and that the cluster has the knowledge of how to work with this in the beginning and throughout the um, uh, life cycle. Now, the question is now: what, 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 what do I need to look at again? Um, so, I guess the the first one is um, it's just the cluster itself, right? Depending of where you are, if someone else is managing it. You probably need to look at the cluster itself as the, uh, on the control plane, just making sure the cluster itself runs. And if there is a problem that you again can correlate something with this, right? Is etcd behaving as expected? Is is it kind of distribute the, the knowledge uh, through the etcd? Um, and um, that that is just you know one indicator or one information that you need to gather. Now on the workloads itself. 
um, the distribution state is essential. Like how many of my dis desired um, workloads paths are running, right? If it's a daemon set, is it evenly distributed on, on all the nodes that, that I want to have taken care of? Or, and if I have a deployment, is it, you know, in, at the scale that, that I need? And if something is going um, unavailable, is that, is that still in my, you know, budget? Or is that something that I need to consider? Um, on the workload side of things, for the scheduler to run, uh, for for making sure that the, the workloads are distributed, we have requests and, and limits, so we need to put these in consideration in context to, to the others um, to make sure that we've got that covered. All right, again, two examples here. Um, so, um, um, you know, uh, looking at the different CPU resources uh, of the requests and limits, and how uh, the utilization of these are um, is is something if you're looking at from the Kubernetes perspective, um, the the starting point of you know investing things, and maybe a little bit on the starting point. That's also something that I found found very interesting. These three perspectives is in no means is there a we we need to measure the services as I said earlier. But it's not something that that uh, you um, that it's it's also very natural for people coming from a different background starting somewhere else, right? So with a Kubernetes environment, maybe I'm I'm more on the DevOps side and, and need to 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 level up. Uh, I need to um, make sure that a new new namespace is is running smoothly, right? So I'll start with a namespace. But I guess the important piece is. That you know, when you start in Kubernetes, that you also understand which environment, how is it running on the on the host itself, on the cluster itself, that you have some means of getting there, and that you also have some means of understanding what the applications, what 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 are actually the developers putting on there, right? Um, so so you know, having good starting points, I think it's it's, it's important, and linking them uh, again, which I'll talk about. Um, how to measure, that's actually pretty nice in Kubernetes, right? Because it basically it's all there, right? We've got uh, cube state metrics, which talks about all the things around the workloads, the configuration, it's the service themselves and just provides, provides these metrics. On the control plane, we have the individual metrics endpoints. And uh, just, you know, uh, for, for completeness, there's metric server to you know, do, do auto scaling. So there's, everything is already there. And um, I have the dashboard there, but um, with these being provided as standard, there's also like a lot of pre-canned dashboards ready to just you know have this perspective ready and and easy to to see. And we have that in Grafana, we have that in OpenShift, so it's it's pretty pretty easy to to get started with and to to enhance with more metrics. All right. Infrastructure. So why do we then now need to look at infrastructure? And the example um, that I, I gave should, you know, hint at it, right? The I.O. problem on the host is something that is needed for the troubleshooting. But also without the troubleshooting, um, it's, it's an, I think it's something that we shouldn't be afraid of or developers, DevOps shouldn't be afraid of, of, of having this, this in mind. And not like you know only look at the uh, at, at my pod and my JVM, but also understanding of how the JVM runs. What what are the threads doing? How is it running on the on the uh, on the host, right? Um, so um, you know, I you know maybe maybe that's that's one takeaway for for this talk, right? Is encouraging developers to look into this and understanding of of, of what's happening there. Hopefully, maybe with, with this talk, a little bit of, of, of what to, to look at. Now, very, very important, right? We talked about the services being the starting point. That's still the case, right? CPU utilization, as Adrian Cockroft says, is virtually useless as a metric in itself. Um, there are so many assumptions in there that if you just look at the CPU utilization and try to learn on it, you know, you will most likely be wrong. But putting that in context and understanding what the service impact is to uh, to a possible problem on the host is the point I'm trying to get at. Um, there's a great method, uh, similar to the red method. There's a similar method here by Brent and Greg, uh, an awesome performance um, engineer, does lots of talks and lots of great books. 
And the use metrics talks about, you know, for all physical server components, so we're looking at CPUs, memories, and storage. For all of these, you know, look at basically three things. First of all, look at the errors, right? If there's an easy way to get at the errors, look at, at the errors and what do, do they tell you? Look at the utilization, so how busy the resource was serving, uh, serving the work, and the situation, so how much work is kind of like queued up for this resource to, to, to work at. Um, so on the host level, um, you know, we have all, you know, these gazillion uh, resources on the host itself or connected to the host. So, um, you know, something that, you know, probably everyone should, you know, have a look at is, is the CPU and memory um, on the usage side of things, on the load side of things. And again, uh, dashboards are, are all over the place. Um, and um, I guess it's just, a, it's, it's an important, you know, just, you know, getting familiar with it. Um, this is this is another example. I just found that found that interesting on the on the JVM side, right? Um, JVM being such an important important part of our system is that we um, kind of you know looking into it deeper and looking at you know different different uh, metrics there, be it threads, uh, be it the the heap, the memory pools, uh, and, and especially the garbage collection, um, is is something to you know understand and you know have ready when you're looking at problems. Um, so again, so we've got the infrastructure metrics. So how how would I get there? Um, the in in Kubernetes, the best way is actually to work with again with some exporters. So there's the uh, Node exporter and the JMX exporter. Also, uh, C Advisor is um, uh, promoting a couple, couple of uh, good metrics um, on, on the infrastructure side of things. But it's important um, that you know um, uh, some for some performance reason you need, you need to also look at the instrumentation itself. That for some performance reason more native instrumentation might might be needed. Um, our uh, our sensor and and you know that that's true for other sensors probably likely also is that we're you know um, we're doing more or less roughly 50% of the instrumentation we're getting um, out of in a native way just just to be more more performant. All right, so we've got the service Kubernetes and the infrastructure, and the they're all needed and I guess, you know, to be taken care of in itself. Now, what do we do with the context? How do we stitch these things together? Um, and that's something that, you know, um, we within the startup, we've, you know, basically built our, our tool about, uh, upon, but it's, it's something that, you know, you, uh, you can also do yourself. Uh, when I was, you know, preparing the talk, I actually realized that um, there's a, pretty good standard in the upcoming um, that, you know, uh, hints at a lot of these, and that's the uh, open telemetry. So uh, there's a lots and lots of things in the open telemetry, but something that uh, for, for this uh, context I would like to highlight is the resource semantic conventions. So the, the resource semantics conventions in open telemetry, they describe um, um, how a resource should be considered of in a consistent manner. Um, so there's a couple of, you know, kind of tagging suggestions. And in open telemetry, there are, um, there are not only suggestions, but there's also some mandatory required ones and some optional ones. Um, uh, but I think um, that's a pretty, pretty decent, pretty good starting point if we are thinking about how to correlate these FD together. So. If you are working with a, uh, if, if you are, if you've got a service and you picked like a service name and OpenTelemetry talks about a service namespace that make these things um, unique together, um, and then you correlate it to a service instance ID, so something that serves this service, then you've got a um, unique um, identifier of what, what this thing is that actually serves this, right? Uh, again, in, in Sana, we also have the service type, but um, which, you know, I think makes a certain use cases easier and easier to, to get at, but, you know, uh, open telemetry does not allow that. Now, 
So we've got this service, right? And if we're using this tagging theme, then we can start correlating things together. We can see, okay, this service belongs to this container, to this host, to this um, uh, Kubernetes, uh, you know, pod, for example. And the other way uh, also around, right? The the information that we've gathered from all these um, different other instances are common tagging schemes that we can use to, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that we can use to correlate one uh, to the other. Now, um, a different way of looking at this um, is, is if we're looking at, at, at the trace, trace world of things. And I'm, I'm mentioning this explicitly um, because, as I said earlier, um, the, the services that the service metrics that we gather are based out of traces. So we infer a lot of these, we and others, right? It's not, it's not unique to Instana, but um, those who are working that way infer a lot of these information um, out of it. And um, the um, interesting or, or the way to look at it is if you've got traces, right, that you use the trace ID in itself uh, to correlate things. Um, here's a, the first one. The example is from Grafana, and, and they talk about how to use the trace ID in locks um, and use a you know common service tag throughout throughout the system. Something that you know the, this service name here they're using um, slightly different, but throughout the system so that they can then you know look to the service. Um, something interesting that I found with Zipkin traces um, that uh, the tag spans. Uh, had the pod ID and for the service naming, they were looking and uh, doing a reverse, uh, reverse lookup on the pod ID and then enrich the, the pod data. Um, the uh, open telemetry talks about making this uh, more and more automatic, right? Um, in, in an open standard, we, we already do this um, as, as do others. So this is an example. And um, um, I mean, we could also do a short demo if you like, but this is an example of how we are doing this and how this is visualized in Instana. So um, the, um, you know, this is our example, but basically we separate these three different perspectives, this application perspectives, Kubernetes application, and interest perspectives, and basically on any entity that uh, you know, you're looking at, um, you, you can link to the others. But, um, you know, conceptually, it's not, in a, you know, you can rebuild this with your own tools. Or again, just just give it a give it a try with an startup. Um, so key takeaways, uh, uh, if if you like, uh, we've got service, Kubernetes, and Infra. Please consider all of them. Please also consider them all of them independent and make the best use of, of when when you're looking at at, at these independently, um, because there's always someone coming from that particular background, and if you overload them uh, with information from different perspectives they might be overwhelmed, right? Um, they, these different perspectives, um, share them, right? Make them shareable within the team to ensure a common understanding of what to measure and why do you measure them. Why is this particular saturation metric for your workload the uh, most important one? And last but not least, right, context is king. Link these together, make them aware for everyone and link them together so everyone has the same understanding um, of, of what, what you can do. All right. Um, I guess this is it, uh, at least for, for, for what I've prepared. Um, and I think we've got time for questions. Now, what I would love you to do is if you could go over to the Instana site and go to the install the operator page, just so people have that link too, because I think that right. would be great and that would get them um, you know, at least to uh, to know where you're, where you live and breathe right. in Instana as well, and where all the docs are as right. well. You can also go to the Red Hat catalog and, and grab it from there. Right. Um, so a couple of words to the operator. Um, the Instana operator is actually so we we've been really been been stoked about uh, the operator and uh, and the the Instana the Instana operator is actually basically available uh, wherever wherever you like, right? <laughs> Um, the, the, it's obviously installed in the, in the operator hub. Um, you can also get it in, in, in directly. We've, we've included it in, in our um, uh, environments and how to install uh, the agent, or you can just like you know get, get the source and, and, and get everything 
um, uh, um, from you know uh, from GitHub directly. Now the operator on the or the agent operator does a lot of like nice things for us, and it's uh, it helps us distributing of what we do with our agents. So you know if we're going back to the talk that I talked about of of, of correlating all these different things together, you know that's something that the operator the agent does. And you know, as you can think of, you know, if we're if we're taking this next steps further, we've not only got we've got infrastructure, Kubernetes, and services, but you've got all you know all mixed in with all the cloud stuff with different uh, operating environments with different runtimes. So there's lots and lots of things to do, and the operator helps us on distributing that workload throughout, throughout the um, throughout the cluster and just picking uh, or selecting different nodes. Putting some intelligence to our uh, operator and making the operator very, uh, making the agents very dynamic, um, and and in, in, in what they do. Um, the operator itself is on the agent side, and we've got something cooking uh, on the backend side, but that's uh, for someone else else to share at a later point. Okay, so uh, a little context is came here. OperatorHub.io um, runs. All of the open source Kubernetes runs anywhere on any Kubernetes, and then um, explaining maybe a little bit, uh, Michael, what the catalog.redhat.com operators are, what that's all about. Yeah, sure. And I'm so sorry that I'm late. I have no control over this, but I'm I've been working from my cabin in the mountains for the last seven months, and it's like uh, it's a DSL phone line running through the woods. So when a moose gets crazy, things can go down. So I apologize for being so, so late. But I did link the, um, and hi, Mike, Matthias, how are you? It's nice to see Doing you great. wearing it. Nice to see you wearing an Instana uh, name badge these days. Um, <laughs> I've got a question for you on, on that. But sure. um, no, I did, I did link the Red Hat catalog because our team works with companies like Instana and others to run their operators through the Red Hat certification process, which, which really allows customers to know that, you know, all the parts and, and the internals of it are, um, you know, like the Blueberry, uh, Pillsbury Muffin Man seal of approval that, that, the, that the Red Hat components and the Instana components are all supportable and they can use it in a production environment. So that's, that's, that's where our customers can go to download something and, and make sure that they're getting um, genuine Intel inside uh, parts. So, yeah, and again, yeah. The, 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 the operator, um, so you can think of the operator in, in multiple dimensions. Um, the, um, so, so far, um, we don't have, like, uh, in our tool, dedicated supports of monitoring uh, operators, so it's, it's, uh, it's just used as a custom resource definition. But obviously, as it gets more and more uh, used by, by developers, it, it would be one of the additional perspectives okay we've got the services we've got kubernetes we've got infrastructure so looking looking a deeper or more intelligent look at the kubernetes and you know um kubernetes um layer the operator gives means of even better understanding and better linking these together and putting some semantics into the operations of let's put let's let's take the elastic search uh, for example right and that's totally in, in a, a layer that i can think of Adding um, and uh, you know we we are uh, running our operator um, you know with great success and are thinking uh, greatly about like how how to leverage um, the the knowledge in in, in an open chip or from any Kubernetes cluster. And you know this doesn't just happen by chance. I, I actually was at a trade show. I think it was probably one of the early KubeCon ones. It might have I think it might have been in. Um, I think it might have been in Seattle or Portland, I forget where, and I ran into one of your founders. Um, his name was mm -hmm. Pete Abrams. Pete Abrams, terrific guy. And I was talking to him about what we were doing, and and um, Instana was probably one of the first uh, APM-type vendors that ever certified a container for the Red Hat portfolio and built an operator. And, and, and that was because we were working with them very closely, and I used to travel down... Pete invited me to your sales kickoff in Miami. It mm -hmm. was probably two or three years ago now. And so me and my team flew down there. We bought, um, you know, appetizers and drinks for the entire sales organization in Astana. So we've actually had a really, 
really good, close working relationship with your whole team, including your marketing people as well, for a number of years. So this 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 doesn't just happen by accident. And and we're we're doing these types of things together to make the overall customer experience as as good as it possibly can be in a cloud mm -hmm. native environment. Okay. And um, and you know, I, and I we we. Yeah, and we continue. We continue to do so, right? So this is this is on the agent side, uh, but we also have you know a lots of backend components. So I'm not. I'm not. It's again for another for another conversation down the road. Uh, I need to get my colleague on online for this, but we're going to continue investing in there. That that's cool. So, hey, I <laughs> I don't see any, any other questions coming in about your technology. There's, there's if anyone one... else on the. Go there, ahead, is one, there is one question. Um, someone is asking the, about the backend operator status um, that you referred to, sort of, and said someone else would. Can you give us any hints on when that? Uh, no, I, I can't give any hints. I'm, I apologize, Chris. Uh, I apologize. Maybe I should have you mentioned it. I apologize. No, is, is 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 that when you say the backend operator? You're, you're talking about that right now. There's an Instana agent which is containerized right. and, and certified. And then are you talking about Instana, the actual, the, the, the smarts on the back end actually being turned into an operator as well? Exactly. So, so Instana itself, uh, so obviously you need to have the agent running, um, but uh, we have an on-prem solution or a self-hosted solution as we like. Um, and Kubernetes is, always has been, or for a very long time, um, been uh, our primary uh, way of, of surfacing this. Um, and uh, with you know uh, operators with our experiences on the agent side, we're also looking into um, you know uh, what we can do uh, on the backend side to make the on-prem install easier and faster. Okay, and is that being driven by customers because they're saying, you know, uh, we have certain requirements where we need to have the full. APM solution inside our infrastructure from a security perspective or something like that. Right. So, so the traditional the traditional on-prem uh, uh, um, questions apply here, right? So, making sure that it's secure, that it's in-house, uh, but also performance reasons of of ensuring that it's 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 nearby uh, the actual workloads. So, so there's there's a multiple uh, way of, of of reasoning about or or um, motivating this. Uh, we don't, don't take a stance right there. We, we just try to make it as easy as possible and op uh, operators and uh, or a homogeneous environment like Kubernetes or OpenShift gives us the means of, of installing it. Yeah. Hey, we got, an we got another question. I'm gonna, I, I don't know if you can, uh, I'm going to read it here and maybe you can translate for me, Matthias. But right. so, uh, so Jeffrey says, hey, in New Relic as we're using right now, we have the app dex, which measures satisfaction or response time based against a set threshold. To get the insight of the application health, does it have any corresponding features for Instana? Right. So um, app dex is a really, really important and, uh, and, and aspect of, of um, you know, monitoring your applications. Um, something that we are more leaning towards um, is the um, SLI SLO way of looking at this. So we've um, we've just we've just introduced that um, that you that you define service level indicators on your customer journeys, define these and alert on, on these. Um, and also with our application perspectives, there's um, you have much more fine granular control. Um, of, of of which traffic of which aspect you're looking at and alert alert on these. So um, right now we don't have a, like the uh, a very very same equivalent um, to to what AppDAX is. Um, but I think um, you know if you look at Instana of, of what we provide, um, I think at the end you will also be uh, you know possibly uh, even more liking uh, the way we translate these things. Okay. Um, hopefully, hopefully, Jeffrey, that uh, that addresses your question. If it doesn't, I'm pretty sure that we can get you just about any questions you want. Um, um, where would we send people to if they have follow-up questions? I mean, my email address is wait at redhat.com. It's just W-A-I-T-E at redhat.com, and I can connect people with 
just about anyone at any level of the organization in Astana. I am from top to bottom very, um, very close with everyone over there. Um, Matthias, do you have? There you go. There's your email address as well. There's my email address uh, in Stana.com. There's a gazillion ways to reach out. Uh, whatever, ping ping anyone at at Instana and we'll get back to you. Um, and um, uh, and and if if uh, and Jeffrey, if you would like to talk about more about the AppDAX standards, I'm I'm happy to you know go go into some detail with you or and especially you know looking at use cases like why are you looking at the specific the specific one that that's very that's very important to us is understanding why this particular measure is is important and helps you there and I think we we usually got a good answer on that. Hey, Matthias, I, I really wanted to ask you this at the very beginning, but I, as I said, I, I've been uh, dealing with uh, legacy internet issues. Next, you next were... time, next time, I'm coming. I'm coming to the cabin, and I'm going to hang out in the cabin earlier. You want to see what it looks like, real quick? I mean, <laughs> this is, this is. Uh... We're we're all going to the cabin soon. Awesome. This is this is my front desk right here. Oh, um, nice. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, this is. This but is I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, <laughs> you know, you were, you were at Red Hat for several right. years, and and then you, and then you moved to Instana. How lucky are you? I mean, I, I think that, you know, being able to be a part of that team in this time where everyone needs APM for, you know, helping them to have the visibility and insight into running their business in the hybrid cloud. Are, are you just absolutely thrilled to be there or I know I uh, uh, well first of all I was thrilled also to be at Red Hat um, Red Hat was uh, was really a great time and we we built some uh, nice uh, really awesome tools in the I was more on the developer side of things there uh, and in the code ready and we really built an awesome tool uh, for uh, analyzing dependencies so shout out all to all my ex colleagues that that was an awesome tremendous time um, and yes, uh, obviously, Instana is, um, is is great because uh, we kind of like you know are challenged um, in a new way of you know being being uh, going against other other players in the market, uh, but using this new microservice movement uh, to to our advantage and and build I think you know something very unique. Um, that uh, is is just very suited to this new to new environment. Just you know, just one example I think, which is really, which is, is also very dear to my heart, is that it's really really easy to get started. Our agent discovers everything, throws everything on the dashboard, and yes, you need to tweak and configure things, but everything is is just there, right? It's it's just it's there. Um, and um, um, as we as we're talking about you know different perspectives of what people are looking at, I think. Uh, for myself, but uh, I also hear that from customers. It's just great that that you know you've got a platform that you look at, and then you you've seen the the majority of things already there, and then you can kind of then dive into details and start tweaking. But you don't you know you're not you're not lost at the beginning, and that's that's something that I value within Insana a, a lot about. And the whole distributed tracing is just it's just a fun topic. It's just it's just a fun technology. Cool. Well, I don't see we have any more questions coming in, and I, I know um, Chris Short is, is going to let us know that we're that we're just about out of time. So, um, mm -hmm. I, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, I, I, I reached out to to uh, to Star, who's my marketing contact over there, and I was like, you got to find me someone like really really good to be a part of this. It's our it's our you know one of our early on um, OpenShift Commons briefings, and so we're really really glad that you guys could help be a part of this today. Glad. Thank you very much for the invitation. Always a pleasure. I'm happy to come back. Um, and it's uh, yeah, it's 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 some great technologies mixing in together. Um, and yeah, happy to be here. All right. And when you get that back end operator, and you're ready to talk, we about it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let my colleague know, and we're gonna talk. Yep. All right. Take care, all.